Into the month of November we go in the college football season. And things are going to be very intense over these next several weeks. As we have teams looking to get into the college football playoff, teams looking to get into a good bowl game this season, teams looking to just get into a bowl game this season, and teams that are looking to salvage some wins to end the season, get momentum and confidence going into 2024. Week 9 recap. As Week 9 delivered on upsets, Kansas upset Oklahoma, Arizona upset Oregon State, Georgia Tech upset North Carolina, handing North Carolina their second consecutive loss. Georgia was dominant against Florida, being without Brock Bowers and going down 7-0 early in that game. And I was very intrigued to see how Georgia was going to look in this game as Brock Bowers has been a focal point in Georgia's offense for the last year and a half. And Oregon was dominant against Utah on the road in what was the game of the week last week. I do also want to point out that tomorrow night will be the first college football playoff committee ranking. I do not know for sure if I will do a reaction to the first ranking. I don't know if I'll do a YouTube short on it or just do a normal video reaction on it. I'm not sure if I will do either of those things yet. I'm not going to promise or guarantee anything, but be on the lookout for something Tuesday evening after the ranking. And some questions that I cannot wait to have answered. Who will be number one? More specifically, how will one through five be ranked? As we have five undefeated teams in the top five, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, and Washington. What will be the order of those five teams? What will be the order of the one-loss teams? As we have got several one-loss teams that are in contention for one of these four playoff spots, where will Air Force and James Madison be ranked in this initial ranking? As I want to see how the committee is valuing these undefeated group of five teams. Liberty, I don't think, will be in their top 25. I'll be surprised if they are. I'm not expecting them to be. But I have my own ranking, which I will have in the comment section pinned in the comment section. Without further ado, let's get to the Week 10 college football predictions. Matchup number one on the docket this week, Notre Dame and Clemson. And this matchup is not receiving the hype that I thought it was going to be receiving at the beginning of the year. In the preseason, when I was looking at all the matchups every week back in August, I looked at this matchup, seeing that it was on the docket for this week, and I thought this could be one of the biggest matchups of the college football season. If things played out the opposite of how they have really ended up playing out. Clemson is on a two-game losing streak. They have four losses on the season. And Clemson having four losses on the year going into November was not on my 2023 bingo card. A lack of discipline against Duke. Bad coaching decisions by Dabo Sweeney in the Florida State game. Losing to Miami in double overtime. And losing last week to NC State. And the defense has been keeping Clemson in these games, at least in three of the four you can argue. I could also be willing to argue they stayed in it against Duke and their offense just made mistakes. So their defense has been doing everything they can. It's just the offense just can't generate anything for the Clemson Tigers. And to make matters worse, Will Shipley, their best player, is in concussion protocol right now, so his status of this game is unknown. And he has really struggled to get going this season. He only has 4.6 yards per carry this season and three touchdowns. He had 15 touchdowns in 2022, 11 in 2021, and in 2022, 
he had 5.6 yards per carry. And in 2021, he had five yards per carry. So this does feel like a lost cause season for Clemson. It really does. But what Clemson needs to do is they just need to salvage whatever they can that's left of this season. As Clemson still has to try to make it to a bowl game. And with the schedule that they have that's remaining... It's tough to say if they will make a bowl game. They got Notre Dame this week. They host Georgia Tech next week. And Georgia Tech, they have been a fairly inconsistent team this season, but they have been winning some games against big-time opponents. They have North Carolina at home, which North Carolina, they're on a two-game losing streak themselves right now. And they end the year on the road against South Carolina in a rivalry game. So it's possible that Clemson may not make a bowl game, but it's possible that they may end up as a 6-16. and Meanwhile, Notre Dame, they are 11th in total defense, while Clemson, they are 6th in total defense. So still one of the better defenses, one of the best defenses in the country from a stat standpoint. As I really expected Clemson to still have a strong defense this season, Audric Estime for the Fighting Irish, 901 rushing yards this season, which is 8th in the FBS. They're 10th in scoring defense, and they're 2nd in red zone defense. And Sam Hartman, last time he played Clemson, he had 6 touchdown passes in that game. And that was a game that just went back and forth. And I anticipate Sam Hartman has a big game this week, despite Clemson's defense having a strong defense this year, one of the best in college football, as their defense has kept Clemson in games, their offense just can't generate anything. But I think their defense is going to get tired in this game by the middle of of the third quarter. And I think Audric Estime, I think he has a feast in the second half. And I am picking the Irish to win this ball game. Kansas State and Texas. Malik Murphy made his debut for the Longhorns last week, taking over for Quinn Ewers, who is going to miss some time due to a shoulder injury. And he went 16 for 25, 170 passing yards, two touchdown passes, and one interception. Running back Jonathan Brooks has 923 rushing yards on the year so far, which is fifth in the FBS and second in the Big 12, only behind Oklahoma State's Ollie Gordon. Kansas State, they have two losses on the year. They came into the season as the defending Big 12 champions. Their two losses are to Missouri and Oklahoma State. Missouri in a 30-27 game, in a game they lost on a game-winning 61-yard field goal as time expired. Their second loss was to Oklahoma State, 29-21. And that was a game that Will Howard threw three interceptions in, and he hasn't thrown an interception since. And part of that is because they're going back to more of their identity, and that is leaning on the run game and asserting the running game, as we've seen them use two quarterbacks in their offense throughout this season. We've seen Avery Johnson get involved in this offense. They are fifth in rushing offense averaging 226 rushing yards per game. They're 14th in time of possession, and they are 4th in third down conversion percentage, converting on third down 55% of the time. And I do think that those intangibles are going to come into play in this game. As Texas, they came off the win against BYU 35-6 in a dominant game, Although Malik Murphy doesn't have, did have the most exciting numbers in that game, but he still did enough to get the job done. But Kansas State is a much different animal than BYU, as Kansas State is a far more talented team than BYU. And I am going to pick the upset here. I get that Texas is a far more talented team in this matchup as Texas, they have so much five-star talent on their roster. 
But I just think this Kansas State running game is going to be able to wear down Texas. And with this being college football in November, I might as well pick some upsets. As going into making this video or podcast for you today, whatever you specify it as, going into it, I thought Kansas State has a strong chance of pulling off this upset, despite this being a game on the road. And I'm going to call for the upset here. I think they'll run the ball efficiently. They'll run it well. And Kansas State pulls off the upset. And honestly, if this ends up being wrong and Texas wins by 30 points, then they win by 30 points. It's no big deal. I just think this is an upset that I really do think is going to happen. This feels like a trap game for Texas. And I'm going with the Wildcats. Up next, we have Bedlam, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. It's the last time these two will play against each other for the time being due to conference realignment. Oklahoma is coming off of their first loss of the season to Kansas. And what a win it was for Lance Leipold and the Kansas Jayhawks. As Kansas was due for a big-time win for their program, and I anticipated Oklahoma would look a little sluggish in that game early on, but I did not anticipate they would lose that game. As I felt like they were going to be sluggish because they were looking ahead to this game against Oklahoma State, their rival. And with this being the last time they played against each other for the time being, this was the most important bedlam to prepare for. As you don't know when they're playing again. No matter what the stats and the records are, you always want to beat your rival, especially when it's the last time you're playing against them for the time being. Because you're going to have bragging rights for a long time. Oklahoma is 52nd in run defense. They gave up 269 rushing yards last week to Kansas. While Oklahoma State, They are on a four-game winning streak. Oklahoma State, they have really turned the tides on their season with this four-game winning streak. And I almost forgot they lost to South Alabama 30-something to seven. In the last four games, running back Ollie Gordon has 857 rushing yards. He has 1,087 on the year so far, which is leading the FBS. And he's also third in the FBS in all-purpose yards. The Cowboys are 101st in run defense. They're 30th in rushing offense. And Oklahoma is 33rd in rushing offense. And I am bringing that up because I think this game is going to simply come down to which team runs the football better in this matchup. I think there's no doubt in my mind that this game is going to be won in the trenches. And when it is a rivalry game, it doesn't matter where teams are ranked. It doesn't matter what teams' records are. It's all going to be settled on the field. And in rivalry games, anything can happen. And we are in the month of November in college football, where we are going to see some upsets throughout these next couple of weeks that we may not see coming because teams are having a hard time staying focused on the big picture, whether if it's making the college football playoff, conference championship game, a New Year's Six game. They just lose focus a lot of the times. And I think this will be an upset that many people may not see coming, but I'm going to predict it. I think Oklahoma State is going to win this ball game in the trenches. I think Ollie Gordon has another big game. I think for Oklahoma State to pull off this upset, I think Ollie Gordon needs to have about 30 to 35 carries in this game. And I do think he's capable of handling that workload for the Cowboys. As the more carries that he's gotten, the better Oklahoma State has been this season. And I'm going to pick the Cowboys to pull out this upset, as this will be one of those November upsets that a lot of people may not see coming. Although some people will, because Oklahoma, they have some flaws as 
those flaws they've been exposed in the last two weeks. And I think Ollie Gordon has a big game for the Cowboys, and he leads them to the upset win. Texas A&M goes on the road to take on Ole Miss. And my thought process for this game is, Ole Miss may be thinking ahead to next week when they go on the road to take on Georgia. So I do think that is in the back of their minds going into this game. So part of me thinks that Ole Miss may come out flat and sluggish to begin this game. But I do think as the game settles in, I think Ole Miss will get better. As Ole Miss is a top 10 scoring offense in college football, averaging 38.9 points per game. For A&M, they are coming off of a win against South Carolina in a game that, you know, it's good to have that win, the fifth win of the year, considering they went 5-7 and seven last year and missed out on a bowl game, needing one more win for bowl eligibility. But it was just against South Carolina, a South Carolina team that has had a disappointing season a team that I feel like is one of the more disappointing teams in college football this season based off of how their last season ended. Now, A&M is second in the FBS in sacks. So they get to the quarterback really well, only behind James Madison with 39. They're seventh in total defense. Despite the bad game defensively against Miami, they're still a top seven defense from a stat standpoint in college football. In last year's matchup, Anaya Smith was not in the game last year as he had a season-ending injury against Arkansas earlier in the year. He had six catches, 118 yards, and a touchdown in last week's game. And Max Johnson, I have been saying since Max Johnson became the quarterback for A&M as Connor Wigman, he sustained a foot injury against Auburn and he's out for the year but Max Johnson he's just been a game manager to me at best I do feel like if A&M still had Connor Wigman I feel like A&M is only having that one loss against Miami in week two on their record right now in fact if A&M still had Connor Wigman I feel like this could potentially be the game day game of the week that's how good I think a&M would look on the rankings right now. As I do think they would have beaten Alabama and Tennessee if they had Connor Wigman. And their defense has kept them in the games against Alabama and Tennessee, but their offense just couldn't generate enough to win that game. And I think in A&M's best interest is to try to run the ball against Ole Miss. They're 57th in run defense. They're not an elite run defense. They're towards the middle of the pack. But I just think Old Miss wins this game. I do think they're going to settle into this game. I think A&M gets off to a fast start in this. But then Old Miss, they settle into the game and they take care of business. I think it'll be a game where the defense will have to carry this team and the offense just won't be able to get it done on the road. And that's another thing. A&M has not won a conference game on the road in... I don't know how long, as it's been a while, and that's going to be the narrative throughout the week, is A&M struggles on the road. And that's another reason why I'm picking Ole Miss, but if they still had Connor Wigman, I would really strongly I would really strongly consider picking A&M, but with Wigman not being the quarterback and they're down to Max Johnson, and them with their not-so-good track record on the road recently, I'm going to go with Ole Miss. Missouri goes on the road to take on Georgia. Missouri had Georgia on the ropes last season, and they had the intangibles to pull off the upset, but they couldn't get it done. They settled for field goals too many times that game. In fact, there were five Missouri field goals in that game. And Missouri only had 294 yards of total offense in that game. They did win the turnover battle. They were plus two in turnover margin in that game. And they only had 14 first downs in that game. Georgia had 
481 yards of total offense in last year's matchup and 28 first downs. Georgia possessed the ball for 34 minutes and 48 seconds compared to Missouri's 25 minutes and 12 seconds. Carson Beck is ninth in passing yards. He is seventh in completion percentage. They are seventh in scoring offense. They are seventh in scoring defense. Their fourth in total offense and eighth in total defense are the Georgia Bulldogs. While Missouri, they are 54th in scoring defense, allowing an average of 23.3 points per game. They're 28th in scoring offense, averaging 33.9 points per game. And Luther Burden, he is fifth in the country in receiving yards with 905. Now, last week, Georgia dominated Florida, despite going down 7-0 early in the game. And I was intrigued to see how Georgia's offense was going to look without Brock Bowers, as Brock Bowers has been a, if not the focal point in Georgia's offense in the last year and a half. But Lad McConk McConkney stepped up with six catches, 135 yards, and a touchdown in that game. Also, I expressed how the running game for Georgia needed to be and was going to be a difference in that game. As they combined, Dejon Edwards and Kendall Milton, they combined for 29 carries, 150 yards, and five touchdowns in last week's matchup. I did talk about a few weeks ago when Kentucky was playing Georgia. The week before that, they had a sloppy game against Auburn, and I felt like that was a wake-up call that Georgia needed as it was a lesson for them to not take any opponent lightly, as to not disregard a inferior opponent on paper, as any team can have their day. But Georgia is starting the difficult part of their schedule with Missouri this week, Ole Miss next week, on the road at Tennessee the week after that, and ending the regular season against Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech, they have been pulling off some upsets this season. But I'm going to pick Georgia to win this game. I think they will win fairly convincingly. I think as long as Georgia just plays clean football, they should win this game convincingly. For Missouri to win this game, however, they cannot settle for field goals in this game. I expect Missouri to go for it on fourth down quite a few times and not settle for three. Because what happened last year, they settled for three too many times and they didn't have the points to win the game. But I anticipate Georgia not having a problem in this game, at least not a problem winning it, as I do anticipate Georgia does win. Although as far as covering the spread, I believe it's 16 points right now. So we're basically looking for Georgia to win by two by more than two possessions and I do think it is possible, but it is November, though. Anything can happen. So if Missouri kept this close, I wouldn't be surprised. But I just think that after the reality check that Georgia had against Auburn, I think they're not going to take any opponent lightly anymore, and they're going to win convincingly, at least this week. Next matchup, Washington and USC. Michael Penix Jr. for the Huskies is first in the FBS in passing yards with 2,945 on the season so far. Caleb Williams for the Trojans is second with 2,646 passing yards. No doubt that these two teams can score points. Washington is ninth in scoring offense, scoring an average of 40.4 points per game. USC is second scoring offense scoring an average of 45.9 points per game. Washington is 5th in total offense. USC is 11th in total offense. But here is the difference in the game for me. USC is 111th in total defense. In their last five games, USC has given up a total of 213 points 
an average of 42.6 points per game in their last five games. While Washington, their defense hasn't exactly necessarily lived up to the hype that they received coming into the season. As coming into the year, there were people that were talking about how Washington would have the best defense in the Pac-12. And I had Washington winning the Pac-12 and making the college football playoff this season. And I think Washington, despite this being a road game, USC just doesn't feel confident, in my opinion, especially on defense. Lincoln Riley, it does feel like he is checked out a little bit, especially in these last five games, maybe even three games, where they gave up an average of 43.66 points per game in their last three. But I just am going to go with which defense I can trust more to make stops, and that's Washington's. There's no doubt in my mind this will be a high-scoring game. But you also got to think at which defense is capable of making stops. And USC's defense, they just haven't been able to make stops in their last five games. Washington's defense at least has, as they did have some trouble against Arizona State a couple of weeks ago. Their defense bailed out the offense that night. And now it's the offense's turn to make plays in this one. And I'm going with the Huskies and Michael Penix Jr. He further stamps his case to be the Heisman winner. As USC, it's just a brutal part of their schedule to end the season. With Washington this week, Oregon next week, and UCLA the week after that. Wrapping things up with the game of the week, LSU and Alabama. Both of these teams are coming off of a bye week, so they have had two weeks to prepare for each other. And this is a classic game of offense versus defense, in my opinion. LSU is first in scoring offense. Alabama is 16th in scoring defense. They are 17th in total defense. Malik Neighbors for LSU has 981 receiving yards this season, first in the FBS. Brian Thomas has 11 receiving touchdowns, which is tied for the most in the FBS. LSU is also first in third down conversion percentage, which that's a big thing that you want to be good at if you want to pull off an upset on the road. Extending drives, quieting the crowd. But LSU's defense has been a weak point for them all season long. They're 84th in run defense, 88th in total defense. And I bring that up because Jace McClellan had 115 yards on 27 carries and a touchdown in their last game against Tennessee. Also, they outscored Tennessee 27 to nothing in the second half after going down 20 to 7. And there's been lots of talks about how Alabama just isn't that good this year. Everybody's counting out Alabama. I just don't think that's the case. I still think there are still those misconceptions about the Texas game and I talk about it so many times. How Alabama they were not the most disciplined team that night. Texas they won the game because they were more disciplined. Alabama, they had two touchdowns get wiped off the board due to offensive penalties, which is something that you would not expect to see from an Alabama team coached by Nick Saban. But the bye week could not have come at a better time for Alabama as the narratives were starting to flow that Nick Saban doesn't have it anymore. Counting out Alabama, they had a weak game against Arkansas a weak game against Texas A&M the week before that. But Alabama, at points this season, they've been their own worst enemy. I am picking Alabama to win this game. I think that 
they tire LSU out. I think they assert their running game in Jace McClellan, and he has a phenomenal night for the Crimson Tide. And I think the narratives will be put to bed for at least another week. As they're saying, it's not Alabama's year. They're going to talk about how LSU's offense is one of the best in college football. They're probably talking about how good Jaden Daniels is. But with their dominant second half against Tennessee, and then going into the bye week, that is the best time to have a bye week, is coming off of a big game like that, a big second half, to generate confidence. And I am picking the Crimson Tide. And that will do it for my Week 10 college football predictions. If there was a game that I did not predict today that you would like my thoughts on, please leave in the comment section down below, and I will respond to you. Also, like, share, comment other things, comment your predictions for this week. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Enjoy the football this weekend. We are in the home stretch of the college football season, and it is going to be a thrilling battle to the finish line.